Kevin Flynn, thank you so much for inviting me to your favourite bar, McHugh's. Thanks, Gary, and Happy New Year to you. Yes, yeah, the queue is the favourite spot. Um, I didn't know where to start. Like, it's so many good Dublin pubs, and we're here at our offices in Glasnevin, and, you know, we've got the grave diggers close by. A lot of people make an effort to go there, so we use that now and again. But, you know, a lot of uh, pubs is about the company and the people there, and what, what, what's special for the queues, it's a small village in the scanner. I'm lucky enough to have a place close by. But the pub is kind of the, the hub of the, uh, of the whole village. You, 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 I see the picture behind you. You've got a picture of a GA match maybe going on in the background. That's probably the local team, yeah. Um, that's the Liscana GA. They won the, the Junior A Championship this year. And the bar manager and the family that run it, Brian Constantine, kicked the winning point for them to win the, the championship. Phenomenal. And like you go down there at the weekend and they celebrated it for two weeks solid. And it was just fantastic, you know. You know, you, you know, for international people that might be listening in, uh, they they don't know Liscanner from a hole in the wall. Where is it? So Liscanner is on the west coast of Ireland in County Clare, beside La Hinch. La Hinch would be the nearest. Uh, La Hinch or Ennis Diamond. So La Hinch is a world-renowned golf course. So uh, lucky enough to play golf there as well. So to play a game of golf in the west of Ireland uh, with a few of your pals and go back to McHugh's, and every now and again, you might win the fiver, but more more times than not, you're handing over a fiver. <laughs> fiver, yeah, lovely, I love it. And 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 as you say, they were celebrating the Junior Cup Gaelic win for two weeks. So they didn't even do that in Argentina for the World Cup. <laughs> no, it's so special. It's so special when when a small village like that win win the Junior A Championship, and uh, it, that pub is it's like the clubhouse for for the GAA team. They they celebrate everything within the pub so you meet great people down there you know and you and you've probably just connected two of the institutions of irish society right there haven't you the gaa and the pub and in previous days the church maybe or whatever but they're so important aren't they still in 2023 oh, we're, Ur- we're urbanites so we probably don't appreciate i i don't appreciate quite as much maybe yeah, and it's the different generations you'll meet in the pub. There was a great story during the summer. You go over for a few pints, nine, ten o'clock, and the next morning you can't remember what time you get home. And uh, next morning, nine o'clock, the the door, the doors, uh, someone's banging the door. You go, oh my god! And my wife's like, "Will you go and answer that?" And I'd met some fisherman in the pub, and he had promised me that he was going to go out fishing early, and he was handing me over fresh mackerel that he had just caught at that moment. No. <laughs> I had to gut the fish and my wife wouldn't let me bring it in the house. I had to go outside and do it outside in the barbecue. But it was beautiful. It's just just the locals down there, the fantastic people, you know? Yes. We're, we're in the pub on our own, I'm afraid, today. We don't even seem to have a, a barman, so we might have to, to serve ourselves. But if we were if we were sitting there on those stools having a pint and the door open, dead or alive, who would you love to have a chat with? Well, uh, the dead one is always interesting, but um, like we did, we're, our offices are close by Glass Nevin, and we did the Glass Nevin Cemetery tour just before Christmas. And like, you know, for history, being a patriot and the history, you'd love to, to, to maybe chat to Parnell or, or Michael Collins. But like, you know, <laughs> it, it would be a difficult conversation, but to, 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 to speak to someone who's alive and have, have a conversation with, uh, it's probably like to have a pint with Shane Lowry. Because I don't think it would be one pint. It'd be more than one. <laughs> I'd say he would be more the type that you said earlier. I'll just go over for a nine o'clock pint and you might get home 10 o'clock the following day. That's the sense yeah. you get with him. I, I, as I say, I, I don't know him myself, but he looks like he's as authentic as they come, right? Yeah, I I got to meet him at a corporate event. This is back in 18. And about three or four weeks later, we were over at the British Open in Carnoustie, 2018. And that was the one. He had just missed the cut by about four or five. Well, he missed about four or five uh, shots. He had just split up with his caddy down at Burn after eight or nine years. So he was going through a difficult time. And I was on the nine o'clock flight out of Edinburgh, getting back to Dublin on the Saturday morning. And we had a great couple of nights there in, uh, in Edinburgh. And uh, one, one seat left on the plane. And who sits down beside me? Only Shane Lowry. And uh, with a book and ear pods. And I was kind of thinking to myself, Jesus, what do I say now? I knew he was going through the horrors. And he would have been well within his rights to turn around and say, look, can you just give me a break? Can you give me a few minutes? I just need to get my thoughts together. So, I, you know, be, me being me, said hello, introduced myself, had a chat. Well, he is such a gentleman. If that's the gentleman he is at his lowest point, you could imagine the, the celebrations and 
there's been many, it's been well documented. He really did enjoy the open win the following year in Port Rush, you know. Just there a couple of weeks ago, I wouldn't say I'm a fanatic for golf, but a couple of months ago, I, I, I saw a competition where he beat um, the other Irish guy, uh, McElroy. Mm. And I think it was quite tense, and they were right up to the 18th in the hall and stuff. And you just saw, didn't you, the way that McElroy took to him beating him? Yeah. If, was anybody going to beat him yeah. on a playoff or whatever? He was so happy, genuinely, to have this blow. And I think that tells you that there's more than it's more than just a, a fierce competitor. Yeah. He's no, he's a great guy as well. You, I, there's very few sports people or any kind of personality, but you've never, I've never heard a, a bad word said about him. Anyone, and he, he can always make time just to, you know, be polite, you know, engage in a conversation. So he's just, just a great guy. I'd love to, I'd love to have an hour with him in a few pints, you know. He doesn't do the Jack Charlton. I remember Jack Charlton, the rumors going around Dublin around the, when he was the Jack's army. He used to buy rounds for everybody in the pub and pay by check. No, <laughs> no, no, not the barman will never catch it. <laughs> absolutely absolutely no no great that, that's um an, an interesting guy well i suppose you've half men let's say and 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 still they say you should never meet your heroes right so <laughs> he seems to have uh, been all right so is that in that over the next couple of minutes teach me something about you or about your lineage or family that maybe i don't know um, well just, just a small story. That I don't want to be relaying back to golf again. But uh, my, 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 gra- my mother uh, and all her family are from uh, Ballybunion, County Kerry, and there's a, a small graveyard beside the first hole uh, of the Ballybunion golf course. It's called Kilhenny, hmm. and the first hole of the course is actually called Tombstone, as you can imagine. Quite a few stray balls might 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 end out <laughs> veering into the golf course. So. Um, Back in the year 2000, uh, they had the Irish Open in Ballybunion. And, of course, the organisers were very concerned that, you know, if there was going to be funerals that week, how would it affect the schedule and blah, blah, blah. And they were reassured that this is an old graveyard. The, the graveyard is full. Unless you've already got a family member, you know, uh, within the graveyard walls, you're, you're, you, you can't just buy your way into the graveyard. The graveyard's full. And they were reassured there was a closed graveyard and there'd be very few burials, if any. Well, of course, the week of the Irish Open, there was two. And the week, the, the first or second morning of the competition, there was there was a funeral. And um, they were trying to figure out, could they play on? And they had TV coverage and all that. And, of course, the next person to tee off was Bernard, Lang, Bernard Langer, the German. And being a devout Christian, he said, absolutely not. And put the whole schedule back half an hour. So Is it was just good. Yeah, so... It just shows you this, the, the, the the small little intri- intricate details uh, of hosting the Irish Open in Ireland, you know? Yeah, well, there's the old saying as well, isn't it? If you want to tell um, God your schedule, make him, to make him laugh, show it to him, but something like that. I, it, it reminds me, I, I, I'm lucky enough myself to live in, in uh, Enniskerry, right? So there's a golf course here, as you know, in, in Enniskerry, Paris Court, about 20-odd years ago. Uh, they had the masters, the senior, I think, the seniors. Yeah. And uh, I remember walking up and watching them just hit the ball. And the rest of us, I don't play much golf. The rest of us don't play golf. It's some other form of game that we play. Because when you see those lads just whack the ball consistently, 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 um, it's a thing of great beauty, I'd suggest. So. Oh, absolutely, it's a different sound comes off the club. It's a different, a different ball fly. Everything's different than what we do. <laughs> oh, I, I remember watching them in, in the neighbor's garden hitting off. And to your point, you just knew by the sound that it was a beautiful shot and uh, effortless. I guess that's like a lot of these. You look at Messi and sports stars. Yeah, they make it look effortless, but it's yeah. like all all things. The, the hard yards are done in February on cold, rainy training grounds or driving ranges. And that's where it actually comes out. And I suppose it's the same as... Yeah, they make it look easy and they look as if they've got so much time, whereas we kind of rush everything and <laughs> create trouble for ourselves. And, 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 and you sound like you play a bit. So they often talk about the most important muscle is the one in between your two ears, irrespective of your stature or your build. Is golf all about that muscle in the head? Overthinking. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. You could be playing 17, 15, 16 holes really well and all of a sudden someone reminds you that you're in line to win something or, you know... He's the fibre! The fibre! Yeah. 
<laughs> very, very close to you actually win the fiver for once. And uh, things could start going awry on the 17th or 18th hole. But that's that's yeah. you, have to, you have to get used to or, or try to play through that, you know. And is that, do you think, you know, you hear about a thing called a scratch golfer. Hmm. And uh, a scratch golfer, I think, is someone who plays to zero. Or, I yeah. sound like I know what I'm talking about. But there's so many of them that are scratch golfers. That there must be, it must be about what goes on. Cycle, you know, sports psychologists now seem to be the the yeah. guys that they all have. Um, yeah. and it's to your point, isn't it? Don't overthink it. Just actually go out and play your game. Is that? That's it. That's it. Well, that's what the best guys are able to do at the at at, at, at the most difficult points. You know, at the, at the most difficult moments. Yeah, and and you and I just bring a big bag of balls, I guess. Absolutely. It's a funny old question, and men aren't great at answering these types of questions because it's sort so, of so not in our nature, wrongly. The kindest thing that can you think of the kindest thing anybody's ever done for you? Just um, again, it's probably related to sport. Um, as a young fella, nine, 1994, Ireland in the World Cup, and an uncle. I was kind of making my mind up when I tried to get to New York for a match and an uncle rang me to say, yeah, if I got to New York, there'd be a ticket there for you. So to say you were at that game, uh, Ireland beat Italy in Giant Stadium in 94. It was a fantastic experience and I'd be forever grateful uh, for that for that uncle of mine for, for, for sourcing that ticket and getting me there. Um, we enjoyed it so much. We stayed around uh, New York for a couple of weeks and in that period, um, I enjoyed it anyway. And uh, I ended up living in New York then for three years. I went back home, quit a, quit my job, and uh, headed back out to New York, and ended up living in New York for three years. So it's, it just shows you how something small can can you know it, it can change the direction for a few years of your life. So no, but you you wouldn't have gone. If well, we were kind of making our mind up that we were going to go, we were going to go, but could we get tickets and this and that? And it was just that impetus that the uncle rang me. He says, look, if you get to New York, I'll get you the ticket. I'll get make sure that you get into the game. You know, it was just, wow. you know. It's like, it's a bit like the GPO, isn't it? Um, over the years, there's been about 5 million Irish people at that match in Giant Stadium, mm -hmm. you know. And if we if we had a loss, nobody would have ever said it. But it was it was quite an extraordinary uh, opening. It was our first game, I think, wasn't it? And yeah, you know, the little Scottish fella scored the goal. Didn't Ray he? Houghton. Ray Houghton. Ray Houghton. That's it. Ray Houghton. But I think what I remember most about it was the temperature was something oh, phenomenal. Temperatures, yeah, and there's the whole atmosphere. So we, we like it was first time probably you know traveling that far and you know meeting up with different people outside the match. Everybody hustling, bustling, trying to get a ticket, trying to get in. It was just fantastic, you know. Italy as well, big big Italian American Irish. Yeah, Irish but the, the everybody thought that that there'd be a huge Italian follow at the match, but the Irish the Irish supporters definitely did their best to buy up all the tickets, and the the, the Irish team even commented afterwards. Uh, you know the noise and the atmosphere the Irish supporters uh, built up in the day. You know, I wasn't a huge supporter of this year's World Cup for for a number of reasons, but I I did hear twice on different channels. The Moroccans are the Irish of the 94 World Cup. <laughs> so to your exact point, the, 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 the supporters do matter and your personality of a nation comes out, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. And, 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 you know, going back the few years, and I guess you and I might be in and around the same age, you know, it was a different Ireland in 94 <laughs> to no. 2023. No, it was. It was. Um, you know, just to, to, to get the chance to travel, to, to get abroad, uh, ringing it, ringing home, and, and and guys saying, "Oh my God, you're at the game." And, and you didn't know. Sometimes when you are away, you kind of feel the best parties at home as well. But the fact that you yeah. were there and uh, it would always stand to you. And I remember after the Nor the, the Norway game, then uh, all the Norwegian supporters coming, like, you know, where do we go? Where do we drink? We don't have pubs. We don't have Norwegian pubs in in New York. Whereas the Irish obviously had. We, we had lots of places to go. We were up in the Bronx at the time, you know. It's a great point that we, we should sort of dwell on it for a few moments, but it's hard. It's I know that we all need to change our relationship with substances, including alcohol, and, and you know, it, it'll evolve and stuff. But it's, it's, it's a serious, the pub, we're in one virtually at the moment. It's more than just drinking as well, though, irrespective. It's a point of presence in towns in, in, in Ireland. And even when you go away, I have to say, you can't shake it. Fellas want to meet you in an Irish bar. Kevin, would you agree? It's just, if no, you're Irish, yeah. 
Absolutely. And like, you know, people do look out for each other. And like, you know, if you see a younger, you know, kid, 17, 18, 19, and they're having, you know, they're starting to go out and they might get a bit messy. You, you, you're always looking out for each other. You, it might not be your kid, might be someone up the roads, but everybody would always make sure they get home. And, you know, the bit of conversation, bit of crack, catching up on the sport, catching up on the news. It, it's just fantastic to get an hour or two, bit of a bit of a break at the weekend and just get down to the pub and catch up with a few people, you know. It's changed too. Uh, it would, um, myself and the family, we went and had a staycation here in Dublin a couple of months ago in Dublin. And uh, <clears throat> the old pubs, they're all different now too. They're gastro pubs. And, you know, some of them, and we went to the Ginger Man, which I love there on Fenian Street. Oh, it doesn't open on Monday. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jamie Mac, don't know. Yeah, some of them become more restaurants, but there there are great pubs. Like you know, I I enjoy the Grave Diggers, Donnie's, um, some great pubs. I'm uh, living in I'm for County Mead, so we have some great pubs up there. Uh, Mrs O's, you'd see it on the Guinness advert. Or uh, there's one famous one, uh, Gilson's in Drumree. It got voted about ten years ago the worst pub in Ireland, but it's a great pub. <laughs> the worst, the worst pub in Ireland. It's the type of. It's a badge of honour. I'd say there's a lot of people who want to go to the worst pub in Ireland. The toilets yeah. were still outside at that stage. Well, it sounds to me, and we'll finish with this one, it sounds to me, and I say this in the nicest possible, you're a real mongrel. You've mentioned Claire, you've mentioned me, you sound like you've a Dublin sort of accent, you have a bit of Kerry going on. You're a real sort of mongrel. Oh, very, very much a mean man. Any of the guys in the industry, all the, all the, the dubs would know, very much a mean man. Are you? Uh, very proud the young fellas playing for me hopefully this year and will be uh, hopefully give Dublin a run soon. And that's sure. That's sure there behind you. Is that? Oh, that's the Retoth GA shirt. Uh, the lads won the championship a couple of the last two years there. So uh, uh, the young fellow was uh, it was great that he was involved. You know. Did you play a bit? I played a bit, not not to any highest uh, high level that these lads are playing to now. But uh, no, it's great. It's great to see that the, the new generation coming through. You know. Never played much. I played a lot of soccer and rugby, but I remember um, spending my summers down in Kilkenny, different part of GAA, but hurling. And my goodness, you, it's a bit like skiing, isn't it? You'd want to get over the fear at about four years old because the lads, they'd be spinning these slithers by your ear. And I was the token dub in the, in the goal. <laughs> and my goodness, I... I the discipline that you have to apply uh, and maybe we can talk about it a bit for an amateur yeah. um, group of fellas is you'd have to recruit them <laughs> just for their application after know, they, they're living all but uh, professional lifestyles yeah, for an yeah. amateur sport it's, it's unbelievable the professionalism the training the discipline the diet the early nights the early mornings like you know, what these guys what these they put themselves through to, you know, and then they go out and they perform on the big days, and some days it goes well for them. But sport, sport more often than not, it doesn't go well for them. They have to pick themselves back up again, and it's that resilience and that determination that to, to pick yourself back up again and go again for another year. You know, so, and, that, that, and, and that's why you know I'm sure you'd agree. I hope you agree. Is that sport at any level is so important, particularly when you're younger, to get used to working as a team. Yep. The goalkeeper in the centre. We all want to be the centre forward. And we yeah. all want the score to go. But you eventually get to the stage where ah, I just want a game. I'm happy to be left full or left half back. Or, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and do you find that when you're looking at your own teams and building teams that it's helpful if fellas have and girls have a, a background of sport? Do you, do you ever... I know, without a doubt, uh, you know, the, the old country guys or the country girls and they'd be involved in sport, you know, uh, it's, it's great. And the community and the, and even the network, they don't even realise the network they're building up through playing sport. And, you know, you go talking to them, uh, do you know someone in this area? Do you know someone there? And they say, oh, I know someone from my team or I, I, I can get in contact with someone. So, you know, sport is great for young people and uh, it builds a great network and a great camaraderie within the group, you know? Yeah, I can't remember many of the medals, but I remember the day after many of the wins, that's for sure. <laughs> well not. done, well done. <laughs> so Kevin, it's been short and sharp, but it's been interesting. We've been all over, for those listening internationally, we've been from the east coast of Ireland to the west coast of Ireland to the south of Ireland. We've been in loads of pubs. Have a look at the map. Kerry, Clare, Mead, Dublin. Were we anywhere else? New York. New York. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, thank you, Kevin. Thanks very much, Gary. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate that. Thanks, Thanks a bit. Thanks.